Elliot Colburn. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And uh, in rising uh, to support this bill, can I again congratulate the member for West Dorset in securing um, the, uh, this place and my private member's bill ballot. I think it's a fantastic opportunity for us to be able to discuss these issues. Yeah. Uh, and in doing so, I'd also like to pay particular tribute to the animal welfare charities who have also been lobbying hard on this issue for many, many years, uh, including Cats Protection and Battersea Dogs and Cats Home, both of which I've had the pleasure of speaking to over the course of the last couple of months uh, and I've been clear to them that I would be here today to support my honourable friend uh, as we take forward this important bill. Um, I also want to pay tribute to some of the amazing animal welfare charities that I have in my own constituency of Car Shorten and Wallington, including those such as well, uh, Wallington Animal Rescue who have done some incredible work to look after animals at a local level. Uh, but this bill is incredibly important to me because, like so many other people um, in this place today have uh, already spoken about, I'm sure we'll hear more, more from this afternoon. Um, I am a pet owner myself um, and uh, I've been uh, blessed to be in a home with animals ever since uh, a child where uh, began with just a few rabbits, that's all I could manage according to my parents, um, until the, uh, the time that I became a teenager and we were uh, uh, given the opportunity to own a dog for the first time and uh, nothing really brings joy into a family's life than bringing a pet into, um, into their home and uh, I recommend it to, to anyone who doesn't yet own one. Um, I was uh, lucky a few years ago um, to meet Jed, who I should probably clarify, given the topic we're debating is not an animal. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and, uh, but I, was, uh, <laughs> I will leave that to my honourable friend's imagination. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, I had no idea, Madam Deputy Speaker, that in agreeing to, um, to marry Jed and let, let Jed into my life, that uh, not only would I be taking on the responsibility of looking after two additional dogs in Willow and Lola, uh, but I'd also be taking on the responsibility of looking after horses, sheep, pigs, uh, and of course Jed's real passion, which is chickens and ducks. It's more animals than I ever thought I would ever come uh, to have in a lifetime, um, but they are part of the family and I absolutely love having them. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit more about the, the first dogs that arrived in our, our, our life, which was uh, Snoopy and Jazz, who were both rescues from Battersea Cats and Dogs Home. Um, Snoopy, which you, you may not believe this if you'd, ever, if you'd ever met him, but Snoopy was an unwanted Christmas present and ended up in Battersea after being left there by a previous owner. Um, Snoopy and Jazz, like so many others uh, that are residents of Battersea Cats and Dogs Home, were Staffordshire Bull Terriers, which sadly have, I think, quite a bad reputation um, across the country. They're seen as somehow more violent, they're seen as inappropriate pets, whereas anyone who's ever owned one can tell you that they are some of the most loving dogs that you can ever have. And I'm so pleased actually that last year they were named um, the UK's favourite um, breed of dog. Of course I will give way to my honourable friend. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. There are no bad dogs. There are bad owners and dogs take after their owners when they do something very bad. Or with my honourable friend, and uh, I, I think it's uh, uh, a testament actually to the work that animal charities like Battersea Cats and Dogs Home do that they are able to find um, new, loving, permanent homes for dogs like Snoopy and Jazz. Uh, Jazz came to us because she had been passed around many different homes, she'd been to about three or four um, because. Uh, some of her previous owners had found her behaviour challenging. She was described as a bin raider when we took her on. Um, I can confirm that that description was <laughs> accurate. Um, but sadly, some of the behaviour that she displayed when we took her on, uh, particularly her, her apparent fear of men, um, suggested to um, Battersea when they uh, eventually let, her, let, um, let us take Jazz home, that she probably, sadly, had been subject to some level of abuse herself in the past. Um, so I'm pleased that we managed to give Jazz a good home and uh, that she's still with us today. Um, but I know just how devastated um, me and my family would be if any of these animals um, were to be uh, taken from us and abused by others. Um, there unfortunately was quite a high profile um, number of animal abuse cases involving cats um, in my constituency and the surrounding areas and the Minister may know um, this, uh, this case already. Uh, there was a case um, starting a few years ago of what is known as the Croydon Cat Killer, 
um, which unfortunately is still an open investigation and we're no closer to finding the truth. Um, the, it started, funnily enough, in Croydon, that's where it got the name from, um, which is the borough that I border. However, there was a spate of cat killings which involved beheading the cat, which has spread, it, um, which has spread to other parts of South London, including Castle and Wallington. Now, there has been an investigation into this, and the conclusion was, uh, was that this was down to urban foxes which the owners of these cats find a bit fanciful, and I have to say, I quite agree as well. The pattern of behaviour, particularly beheading the cat and leaving, um, leaving it there with no evidence of the cat being eaten, doesn't suggest to me that this was urban foxes. This suggests to me that there is a systematic level of abuse going on here, and I sincerely hope that investigations can be reopened and that these cat owners can have a bit of justice and a bit of an answer to what happened to their beloved pets. But just bringing, my, bringing, my, um, bringing it back to the bill, um, I think it's evident that, um, as we've already heard from earlier contributions, that six months is certainly not enough. Uh, and if you, look into the, in, if you look into the statistics in a bit more detail, uh, you will see that only in the last 10 years, only 6 to 11% of all people convicted of animal cruelty offences were sent um, for an immediate custodial sentence. Only 6 to 11% of people convicted of these offences served an immediate custodial sentence. This clearly is not a deterrent, and that is why I'm fully supportive of the measures in this bill to increase sentences to five years, which I think, notwithstanding the concerns we've heard from honourable members for South End West and for Christchurch, who are no longer in their places, I think that will go a long, long way to acting as a deterrent to people who want to commit these heinous crimes. So I'm very, very pleased that my honourable friend has been able to bring the House together today, and I fully support this bill and look forward to seeing it through to a royal assembly.